Hello, calculus. This is, I think, crossing my fingers, knocking on wood, the last COVID video that I have to make, hopefully. Ah, saved the best for last. Okay, this is lesson 1.4, curve sketching. You're going to love it. We get to draw some graphs. Um, so as we're drawing graphs, um, just thinking about features of graphs that we want to watch for, find, um, and use to help us get a graph sketch. Um, so this is kind of a weird lesson that is a lot of skills from last year and prior classes with graphing mixed in with like a little bit of like what we've learned about limits and asymptotes and uh, limits as x approaches infinity. So we're going to look for um, as we sketch functions, we were, we're going to watch for the domain and think about um, that zero denominators and square roots of negative numbers um, have to be avoided. Uh, we're going to find vertical asymptotes uh, from our denominator. We are going to uh, look for holes in the function where we have um, factors that we've reduced. Um, when you're writing holes or finding holes, you do want to include their y value. So make sure you write your holes as ordered pairs. Um, and to do that, you plug the x value into the reduced function. So we'll do that. Um, look for your intercepts, both the x and the y intercepts. You know, watch out for situations where you have an asymptote on the y axis, so there is no y intercept. Um, but, you know, the x-intercepts happen when y equals 0, the y-intercepts happen when x equals 0. Um, a lot of times we might say if we have a rational function or a polynomial that those x-intercepts come from the numerator. Oops. You know, the vertical asymptotes come from the denominator. Let's not judge my spelling today. Um, and then we'll think about the end behavior, the far left and far right side of the graph. And um, we can use a little bit of symmetry, even an odd asymptotes to help us. You know, if we know that it's an even vertical asymptote, we know that, you know, those two sides are going to be the same on both sides of the asymptote. Um, also, thinking about the even and odd behavior of the intercepts. Um, this is something from last year that you might remember if we have, for example, a factor of like x plus 2 squared, um, where that has an x-intercept at negative 2. Um, and this would be either a polynomial or it would be in the numerator, not a vertical asymptote, but an x-intercept. Um, that looks funny. But that might mean if it's a power 2 that it like comes down and touches and turns around and we call those multiplicities. And um, if we have a factor like with a third power or a fifth power, some odd power, that the behavior would be that it maybe kind of flattens and inflects and then continues on. So those sort of um, even and odd behaviors, both with asymptotes and with x-intercepts, can help us um, as we're graphing. So at first, we're just going to look for those features and write them down and not sketch the graph. And then we're going to do uh, uh, several graphs together, three graphs together. OK, so let's, um, whoops, one more. All right, let's uh, find the information that's requested here. So we're going to find the domain, vertical asymptotes, and end behavior of this first function. Uh, it's a rational function. It looks like we can factor the denominator a little bit. So if we factor that denominator, we get x plus 2 over x multiplied by x minus 2. Um, that does not reduce at all. Um, we definitely have a domain restriction here. The x values that we cannot have because we cannot divide by 0 are 0 from this factor right here, and the other one would be positive 2. So all real numbers except uh, 0 and 2. Um, those 
are both um, vertical asymptotes for this function. So if they had if canceled out, that would be a whole. But if they don't cancel out, they are a vertical asymptotes. Okay, so now let's think about the end behavior. We kind of talked about this last time when we were talking about limits at infinity. Um, for our end behavior, we focus on the powers, the highest power in the numerator and the highest power in the denominator. Um, it looks like in this case our denominator is a lot larger. So uh, both on the right side and on the left side, our end behavior is that the function is approaching y equals 0, which is the x-axis. You know, So if we were looking at a graph, this would be like approaching that, maybe from the top or the bottom, but definitely getting sort of flat at 0 right there. OK, so um, if we, you know, last time we wrote those as limits, the limit as x approaches infinity of this function and the limit as x approaches negative infinity. And in both cases, because that denominator is so much bigger, um, it will equal 0. And it's not necessary for you to write that limit. I just wanted to connect it to what we did last time. Um, maybe you're thinking to yourself, I feel like the bottom one is has this negativeness about it. Um, that's true. Uh, if you think about subbing in a really big number, you would have a negative big number on top. And you would have, because this is squared, and then minus 2x, this would actually be a really big positive number. So a negative big number divided by a really big positive number, it's getting really close to 0, um, and it's approaching it from the negative side. Because, you know, this would be a very, very, very teeny tiny negative number, you know, getting closer and closer to zero. But the one above would be approaching zero um, from the positive side. Anyway. Okay, let's look at the next one. Uh, g of x is equal to 2x to the third power over x plus 3 squared. So we can't really factor this one. It's already in a factored form. The domain here would be all real numbers, except x cannot be negative 3. Um, this would be a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. And that would be an even one, which means if we were doing our graph, you know, and we had that x equals negative 3 asymptote, Either both sides of the graph are going up, or both sides of the graph are going down. And we analyze the function a little more to figure out which. OK, and then our last question is about the end behavior, the far left and the far right side of the graph. For end behavior, we want to think about those highest powers. So the numerator is a 2x to the third. The denominator, if we multiplied it out, would be an x squared as its leading term. Uh, and again, when we're talking about the far left as we're approaching positive infinity uh, and the far right as we're approaching negative infinity, except strike that and reverse it, positive infinity on the right, negative infinity on the left, as we get to those far sides, these other terms don't matter as much as that x squared. They just are so much smaller than that x squared that x squared is uh, running the show. So if we consider those powers, it looks like our higher power is in the numerator. Um, you know, if you even think about dividing that just with those two terms, um, it kind of would divide to be about the same as 2x. And so 2x is a line with a slope of 2. The ends are like this. And that's what the ends of this function are going to look like is it's a, a slant asymptote. So, and again, it's not like we're not going to be graphing that slant asymptote with great precision. Um, we just kind of what this is about is like getting a good rough graph, a rough picture of what your function is doing. So our end behavior is um, 
as x approaches positive infinity, the function is going to go up. And as x approaches negative infinity, the function goes down. So that's the notation I think we used last year. And we could have written it as limit notation as well. So anyway, anywho. All right. It's Friday, chop chop, we gotta go fast. Okay, here is function h of x, and it's factored for you, so that's very convenient. So thinking about the domain of this first, we wanna look for uh, division by zero errors, so we would say that x cannot equal negative two or positive two. Okay, when you see this little red right there, h sub red, what that means is the function h reduced. So you probably were like, hey, there's an x minus 2 that I can reduce. And when you reduce it, that creates the reduced function. These two functions are identical, except for one thing. They're 100% identical, except, oh my gosh, e, x, e, c, except, I can't spell except right now, except <laughs> for a hole. Oh my gosh, my pen is like drag, uh, like uh, delaying behind, the ink on the screen is like delayed behind my pen. And so when my handwriting gets really, really, really bad, not that it's ever great, but when it gets really bad, it's because the there's lag Oh, that's a video game thing. You guys understand lag. Um, there's lag, and it makes my handwriting terrible because I can't see what I'm writing. It's, like, delayed. Anywho, um, those two functions are exactly the same except for the whole. So we've got the reduced function here, and we'll use that reduced function to finish up the rest of the characteristics. Vertical asymptote from that denominator at x equals negative 2. The whole comes from the reduction. So that hole is at an x value of 2. And to get the y value, um, plug that x value into the reduced function. Wow. It's like I'm in kindergarten and I can't write. So if we plug that 2 into our reduced function, um, our numerator would be 6. Our denominator would be 4. So that's 6 over 4, which reduces to 3 halves. Okay, I plugged my tablet in and it seems to have helped with that delay. I mean, just so you know, it's like 11 o'clock at night, and I've made like so many videos, so that's why I'm weird, and I'm so sorry. Um, end behavior, last thing. If we look at um, whether we look at our reduced function or whether we look at our original function, you can see that the power in the numerator and the power in the denominator are the same, and if we kind of thought about dividing those, we would end up with end behavior of one. A ratio of leading coefficients is just one. So both on the left and on the right, this function uh, is getting closer and closer to a height of one. All right, so now we're going to do this, finding all this kind of information, but then we're also going to use that information to help us make a rough sketch of the graph. And it is so fun. You will love it. So these are kind of the steps you go through. It's uh, you know mostly the same as what we've been doing. Give the domain, reduce the function if there's um, factors that can cancel. Um, you may have to factor if it's not already in a factored form. Find uh, the vertical asymptotes and the holes. We look on the bottom of the fraction for those. Give the x and y intercepts. Uh, x intercepts, if it's a rational function, come from the numerator. Uh, y-intercepts, we just sub in 0 for x, in case you forgot how to find those. Um, for the end behavior, we're going to think about limits on the far left and the far right, and those are horizontal asymptotes for a lot of functions, but they could be slant asymptotes or some other kind of crazy end behavior. 
um, like polynomial end behavior, for example, where like both ends go up or something. And um, you can use even and odd stuff to help you. Uh, and sometimes, number seven, sometimes it's helpful if we find a starting point or even a couple of starting points if we're not sure. So always the old plug and chug can help you get started uh, if you're not sure, and then you can graph it. All right, so first graph. So our recipe is to find the domain first. So the domain of this function is, hopefully you're looking at that and thinking to yourself, there's no restrictions here. We can use any x values, and that is true. Our domain is all real numbers. Uh, x intercepts, you know, this doesn't really have a denominator. So those uh, factors that you see right there are giving you the x intercepts. This function has an x intercept at 0, at positive 1, and at negative 2. 0, positive 1, negative 2. y-intercept. Um, to find the y-intercept, we plug in 0. And maybe you're like, well, duh, it's already on the graph. It is. So we plug in 0, we get 0 times negative 1 times 4, which is 0. If the origin is one of your x-intercepts, then it is your y-intercept. That kind of looks like a hole. It's not a hole, it's just a duplication. All right, the end behavior of this function. Well, this is actually a polynomial function. It's not a rational function. It doesn't have a denominator. So for a polynomial function, really quick, I'm going to build the chart because you'll remember it when I build it. Even degree, odd degree, um, positive leading coefficient, negative leading coefficient. So even positive, both up. Even negative, both down odd positive and odd negative coefficient and we kind of like memorized this in prior classes but honestly you could have thought about it with limits now and you would get that same thing because you know if we think about the limit as x goes to infinity of that function you know we're subbing in bigger and bigger and bigger numbers it's like just infinity. So up on the right and the limit as x goes towards negative infinity of this function. Well, if we think about subbing in a really big number, we've got a negative big number, a negative big number, and a negative big number squared. But a negative times a negative times a square is positive infinity. So it looks like the left hand side is going to be up as well. Okay, so when we draw the sketch of this graph, we've got this side that's going to be up and this side that's going to be up. Um, for our x intercepts, this one has that even behavior. So at negative 2, it's not going to go through that intercept, it's going to turn around, touch and turn around for an even uh, multiplicity. So it's going to go up again, dip down through that last intercept and beyond. So that was our first sketch. Um, you know, this coordinate plane has on it some numbers on that y axis. And I hate that so much because we are doing like a super rough sketch. We didn't like measure how high it should be or calculate how high it should be. This is a rough sketch. It shouldn't have numbers. There we go. Perfect. Um, I graphed it in Desmos so we could do a quick little check and you can see there it is. Um, what we're looking for here is the right shape. We're not looking for perfection. It's a rough sketch of the characteristics of that graph. Okay, next graph. This one is a rational function. We've got a numerator, we've got a denominator, and thank goodness it is factored for us because that would not be fun to factor. So the domain of this function, very first, can't divide by zero. So our domain is 
or, or our domain restrictions, I guess, are x cannot be 0, 1, or 3. And again, that comes from the denominator. So now that we've um, written down the domain, let's go ahead and reduce this function. Um, this one's kind of cool to reduce because it has uh, some interesting stuff happening. One of these factors of x minus 1 can reduce, and one of these factors of x can reduce. So this is what we're left with. So we've got an x minus 1 and an x plus 3 to the third power, and we're left with an x and an x minus 3 squared on the bottom. Okay, so let's think about what our vertical asymptotes are, and this is kind of, I don't know, it's kind of cool, but um, we do have a vertical asymptote at zero right here and maybe you're like well I reduced one of them should it be a whole well if there's a factor left on the bottom like how we have this x that's left there on the bottom if that's the case then it is going to be a vertical asymptote so we have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero I'm going to go ahead and sketch that in and we also have a vertical asymptote at x equals three so I'll sketch that in as well now, if I think about the powers of these, this one is odd, and this one is even. And so when we go to sketch in a minute, we can use that to help us. Okay, so now let's think about the holes. Well, there used to be a factor of x minus 1 on the bottom. There is not anymore. So there is uh, going to be a hole at 1. And to figure out the y value of that hole, we need to sub 1 into the reduced function. So on top, we get 1 minus 1 that's 0, <coughs> 3 to the third, so 0 times 27, and on the bottom we've got a 1 and a 0, oh, 1, oh, I think that 27 is wrong, sorry, I was thinking I was subbing in 0, uh, I'm subbing in 1. 4 to the third, 64. Um, 1, and then 1 minus 3 is negative 2 squared is 4. And, you know, it didn't, turns out it didn't matter what any of those other numbers are because I've got that 0 there. So the whole is at 1, 0. It's like an x-intercept hole, which I kind of like. They're fun. Okay, so, and that hole, um, the power that got reduced was... Sorry, oh, that's an odd hole. If sometimes it's useful to know that um, more because it's a kind of uh, I don't know ghost x intercept. Anyway, all right. So the next one is the x intercept. X intercepts are going to come from the numerator. So this one, if we look at the factors in the numerator, you can see that x minus one there. That is not going to be an x-intercept because it's a hole. So it's like an imposter or ghost x-intercept. But we will have an x-intercept at negative 3, 0, the other factor that's in the numerator, and that is going to be an odd x-intercept. So we're going to see some inflection happening there. Okay, the y-intercept, um, since uh, x cannot equal 0, since we've got a vertical asymptote right there. Um, there is no y-intercept. If we tried to calculate it and sub in 0 for x, um, that 0 right there would cause us to have a domain error. All right, and then finally, the end behavior of this function. So I'm going to erase my little cancellations here so we can figure out what our leading terms are. Um, this function, let's see, on top, it is power 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, x to the 6th power. If we multiplied it out, now of course there would be lots of other terms, but the only the highest one is important. Uh, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the bottom. And you could do this from the reduced function as well, I should say. 
All right, so if we think about what how that reduces x to the sixth over x to the fifth, that reduces to approximately just an x. Um, top wins, uh, and x is a line that's up high on the right and down low on the left, so that gives us our end behavior for our graph. All right, so we have to somehow translate this information into a sketch. Super fun stuff. Well, on the left is down low, so it's going to kind of head up towards that intercept. We said that was an odd intercept, so it's going to inflect. So it's going to kind of flatten and then keep going. Now, it's going to run into this asymptote. It can't turn around. I know that it can't turn around because I don't have like another intercept somewhere. If it turned around, it would have to have another intercept here. That um, asymptote at y equals zero is like a fence that it can't cross and there's no intercept so it can't cross so it is stuck in that quadrant that it's in and it's gonna finish by going just up that asymptote. Okay, so um, this vertical asymptote at zero is an odd one. So since it finished up high or is approaching infinity there, that means on this side it has to be down low because that's an odd asymptote. So it's going to go up and through this hole, except it's a hole, so it's not really going through it. It's got a hole there. Uh, and it passes through that hole. It can't turn around. Can't turn around because there's not another x-intercept there. So it's got to just keep going up. Okay, and then finally that asymptote at 3 is even. So that means this side of the function has to be up high as well on the other side of that asymptote. It's got to come down, but then maybe you notice, hey, there was not another x-intercept. And it's not because it's farther over. We, we didn't find any more intercepts from the function. So, and also my end behavior is that it needs to be up high on the right. So this is just kind of like a little like squished weird parabola thingy, little u on the side there kind of. And that's what it looks like. So I graphed this in Desmos so we could kind of compare and it does look ish like our graph. Now um, there was no scale here on the y-axis and we're trying to make a sketch not a perfect function um, so you can see the scale on my desmos is from negative 20 to 20 and from negative 40 to 60 so um, is the sketch great like a great representation of this function no but it does it have the right shape um, to get the idea of what this function is doing across sure it's growing pretty slowly on both sides but it is going to eventually, you know, have that line behavior. Um, yeah, these are rough sketches. So we're going for the right sort of look, not perfection. All right, last one. Funky. Y equals X plus 1 over the square root of X squared. So um, first thing we always want to think about is what is our domain uh, and our domain here I mean we're we've got a positive number under a root so the root itself is not causing a domain restriction because it's the square root of a positive number because x squared is always positive but um, x cannot be zero because if x was zero that would be a division by zero error so x cannot equal zero uh, and that does happen to be, even though it's under a root, it's kind of the same idea that is a vertical asymptote for this function. Um, sometimes it's maybe hard to tell if it's an even or odd one because of the root and the power. And um, so in this case, I would probably not declare whether that's even or odd. Uh, we maybe just don't know because this is a little bit different type of function. So nothing reduced, so there are no holes. The x-intercepts, we would look at the numerator to find those. So we have a, an x-intercept at negative 1, and that's an odd one. 
the y-intercept we would find normally by subbing 0 into the function. Um, but in this case, if we sub in 0, we would have that division by 0 error. We have a vertical asymptote on the y in axis, so there's no y-intercept. OK, for the end behavior, this one is interesting. We did a limit last time that was kind of similar to this. Um, so let's think about the right side of this graph. I'm going to write it as a limit. The limit as x approaches positive infinity of x plus 1 over the square root of x squared. Well, that plus 1, uh, as we get closer and closer to infinity, as x gets larger and larger, it just really doesn't matter. Um, when you're you know, near the origin and you're adding 1, it makes a big difference. But when you're at like a million and you add 1, it just doesn't matter. So we can think of this um, numerator as kind of approximately just x. And then the denominator is the square root of x squared. Well, that's just the absolute value of x. It just is x, you know, a square root and a power 2 cancel each other out. But we just need to make sure that we acknowledge that it's going to be a positive number. And that's what those absolute value bars are for. So if I have a positive big number and I divide it by the absolute value of the same positive big number, that's just 1. As long as we're talking about uh, up approaching positive infinity. So on the right side of the graph, we have a horizontal asymptote at 1. So now let's think about the limit on the other side. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of x plus 1 over root x squared. If we think about, you know, this same fraction, uh, this would, as we're approaching negative infinity, this is a negative big number divided by the absolute value of the same negative big number. It's a negative big number divided by its positive self. So that would be negative 1. And what that, what we just talked about there, honestly, it takes a minute. I mean, I don't know, maybe you're like, oh, that's fine, I get it. But um, I feel like last year that was something that kind of took the students a while to get the hang of. So if you're like, eh, that was weird, uh, you'll get the hang of it. It'll be fine. Um, okay, so now when I look at this graph, I'm like, I don't, I feel like I don't really have enough to go on. So sometimes, especially with equations that you're less familiar with, it's not bad to um, go ahead and throw a couple x values into the function and get some starting points or a starting point. So um, over here on the left, I'm going to sub in, let's see, negative 4. Why not? So if I sub in negative 4, the numerator is negative 4 plus 1. That's negative 3. And the denominator is the square root of negative 4 squared, which is 4. So negative 3 fourths. So that gives me a point eh, right around here to go with. So it looks like the function is sort of growing. You know, it's at negative 1 over here, or really close to negative 1. It's growing. It goes through here. It's getting closer and closer to this asymptote. It's got to go up. It can't go down because going down would require it to turn around, and we don't have another intercept. Okay, and then over here on the right, maybe you're like, I don't know, there's nothing there. So let's pick another value. Let's pick 1 and sub it in. Uh, in the numerator, that would be a 1 plus 1. That's 2. And in the denominator, the square root of 1 squared is 1, and that's 2. 1, 2. So we've got another point to go off of. This asymptote I sketched in is at positive 1, so 2 would be up here. <clears throat> and so we can draw that other branch. Um, it's going to be up high. And, you know, if you weren't sure about that, you could try subbing in, you know, like 1 half or something. But it is up high. 
So it's up high, it comes down. Now in theory, it totally could dip below this asymptote. It can't cross the x-axis, but it could dip below, but this one doesn't. And that's probably good enough. It, even if it did dip below for a second, it would come right back up because it, it can't go down, it can't go down and cross that axis. Anyway, so that is our last graph. Here it is from Desmos, and you can see that um, we got that shape pretty good. This is a, a lot bigger window than I have on my paper, but it has that same shape with that asymptote right there, and there's the little X intercept at one. All right, so here is the assignment, um, 1.4, uh, 3 through 10, 11 through 27 odd, and then 28 through 32 all. Try to get 3 through 10 done before you leave because these graphs are no joke. I want you to work together and talk to them together. Um, don't graph them and in the computer or on your graphing calculator and then try to sketch them. The purpose here is to try to learn to use the equation to figure out some attributes of the graph. So I would do your graph get what you think is done, you know, a finished graph, and then if you want to graph it to check, um, that's fine. Once you've done 3 through 10, the rest of the assignment is limit and discontinuity review. So, all right, that is it. Looking forward to being back with you next week. And we are done.